So do you have puffy gums or gums that bleed when you're brushing floss? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about what causes bleeding gums, whether it's normal for your gums to bleed, the impact this can have on your braces journey, and some treatments you could do from the comfort of your home to take care of these problems. So let's go. What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys have all been having an awesome week and had a very relaxing Labor Day. These days I've been working like five to six days a week so it was really nice having a day off during the week and I haven't had that in a really long time. And I actually had a really cool opportunity. I met with Shelby Church and she's basically a vlogger that makes really cool content here on YouTube. And she's actually gonna be having orthognathic or jaw surgery in the next coming months. And we connected over YouTube and I actually met up with her um, earlier in the week on, on Labor Day. And we actually discussed you know, the pros, the cons, all the things to know about orthognathic surgery. I'm actually gonna link out the video that we did together in the description of today's video, if you guys are curious about checking that out. And while you're down there checking out the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more content like this. For those of you that have been subscribers on this channel, you know I did a live a couple of weeks ago and I had like a huge disaster with the Wi-Fi, and I should have that all ironed out by now. So I'm actually planning on doing a live this coming week. So if you're subscribed, you should get you know a notification on here or on the Braces Club telling you when that's gonna be. It's probably gonna be around Wednesday morning again, but I'll let you know once I have those details kind of ironed out. Okay, that's enough about me and you know the background and what's going on in my life. I always try to rush through the beginning of these videos to kind of give you a little bit of a life update because I don't know if you guys are interested in knowing more about this stuff. And if you are, just let me know in the comments because I'd love to do separate videos, kind of like vlog style but I don't know if this is something that you guys are interested in. I kind of just jump into the content because I think that's what most of my viewers want. But let me know if you're interested in knowing more about you know, me and my life updates and things like that. I'd be more than happy to share it. I just feel like a lot of people aren't interested, but I don't know, so let me know. But what I noticed this week a lot in the office is what inspired me to make today's video. I've been seeing a lot of people with puffy gums and bleeding gums and it's just super, super unhealthy. And I wanna talk about that in today's video. And today's video might be a little bit long. I feel like there's a lot to discuss. So like I've been doing recently, I put the timestamps in the description of the video and you know, in the beginning of this video, so you can kind of jump ahead to the area that's of most interest to you. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is what are puffy gums, what are inflamed, irritated gums? And the name pretty much suggests what they are. It's basically when your gums around your teeth are really, really swollen and red. And it actually looks as though there's a lot of blood in the, under the gums. And that's because there actually is. The gums can be inflamed by a bunch of different things. But the main thing that causes your gums to be really red and irritated is whenever there is bacterial infestation of the gum tissue. It should be no surprise to you that there is literally millions of bacteria that live in your mouth at any given time. And these bacteria like to stick to the teeth and gums, and that's why you're encouraged to brush your teeth twice a day and floss once a day. And the bacterial levels in your mouth aren't that unhealthy unless they get stuck onto your tooth or onto the gums. And if your gums start bleeding while you're brushing and flossing, that's okay. It means that you're removing the bacteria that's under the sulcus of the tooth. So don't mind it if it's bleeding. Just continue to be diligent and brush, floss, and water pick until the gum levels are healthy enough to not bleed. And it's pretty easy to get the bacteria off of your teeth because your teeth are a smooth surface. But with the gums, it's a little bit different. It's actually pretty interesting. Around each tooth is what's called a pocket. What this looks like is a lot like a sweater cuff. And you know, your hand being the, the tooth, there's a little area around each tooth that's like a pocket and food and bacteria can get stuck inside of there. A lot of the times food doesn't get stuck in the pocket unless it's something like sharp, like a popcorn kernel. But if there's bacteria that gets stuck in it, it's really hard for it to come out on its own if you're not brushing and flossing properly. And your body doesn't know how to get rid of this bacteria. So you have all this bacteria accumulating in these pockets. The way your body deals with this is whenever there's an area of infection, your body likes sending blood over there because there's a lot of white blood cells that you know ward off from infection. So wherever there's irritation and there's bacteria accumulating, your body is naturally trying to flush blood into that area to fight off what it views as an infection. And some people think, you know what, it's just normal for my gums to bleed when I brush and floss. And that is not true. Gums should not be bleeding ever. And you know, the reason that they are bleeding is because they're unhealthy. And there's a term for gums that are really red and irritated and bleed when you brush and floss. And it's called gingivitis, okay? Gingivitis means gingiva, which is the gums, and itis means inflammation. So it's inflammation of the gums. And gingivitis, luckily, is a reversible process. So that means that if you can take care of the gingivitis, you can actually reverse it to take your gums back to something healthy. But if gingivitis lasts too long, it goes on to something called periodontitis. 
and that's not reversible. That's an irreversible problem. So once periodontitis starts, you know, you can pause it where it is, but you can't reverse it back to healthy. So you must be thinking, what's periodontitis and how is it different than gingivitis? Well, gingivitis was irritation of the gums, right? And periodontitis means perio, which is around the teeth, itis. So it's an inflammation of the bones and the structures around the teeth. Like I said, whenever there's inflammation around the tooth, right, your body tries to ward it off by rushing blood to that area to make it so that it fights off the infection. But if it seems as though that infection is there too long, your body doesn't want the infection to reach the bone, which is right under the gums. So what will actually happen is that the bone levels will go down. Unfortunately, this makes it so that that pocket around the tooth becomes deeper because now the, the sulcus, you know, the bottom of that, that collar is lower because the bone is lower. And that bone that's around each tooth is the foundation of the tooth. It's basically like the foundation of your house slowly sinking down. And like I said, you can pause this process when you get your hygiene back on track, but you can never reverse it. You can't regain that bone level. So it's really important to make sure that your gingivitis doesn't progress to periodontitis. And the good news is in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some of the ways to prevent this process from occurring. But before we talk about how to prevent this or how to treat this, I wanna to touch base on the impact this can have on your braces journey and your life in particular. And this can have a number of different impacts on your journey, but there are four major things that it can cause. One is that if the gums are this inflamed, there's a lot more bacteria that can accumulate around the tooth. And this can cause cavities. Like we talked about in our last video or one before that, we were talking about the impact cavities can have on your braces journey. And by having puffy gums and bleeding gums, you can actually have a higher chance of developing cavities. On top of an increased chance of cavities, this gingivitis can actually lead to what we said was periodontitis. And periodontitis causes the bone levels to go down and you develop those black triangles between the teeth, which a lot of people have asked about. And these black triangles make it look like there's space between your teeth when there really isn't. And it's not a favorable result. We don't wanna have this at the end of your braces journey. Gingivitis and unhealthy gums can also lead to bad breath. And now I'm gonna make a whole video on the different causes and treatments for bad breath, but just to touch on it, all this bacteria that's accumulating under your gums, it's a bunch of plaque and it accumulates and it accumulates and it releases a really, really bad odor. And this bad odor is actually has a, a name. It's called perio breath and it's a really, really rancid smell. And the fourth thing that gingivitis can cause and periodontitis can cause is actually an increase in your treatment length. This is because as the plaque accumulates and hardens around the teeth, it'll actually jam up the teeth from moving and the teeth have a harder time moving, which means that you'll have a longer time to the end result, ultimately leading to a longer treatment time. So having gums that bleed and are puffy, it can lead to cavities, bad breath, you know, gum disease and bone loss, which is irreversible and an increased treatment length. So this brings us to the question, what can I do about it? How can I prevent this process from occurring? Well, the biggest one, which is something I feel like I've been driving home a lot these days, is to practice really good oral hygiene. This means get an electric toothbrush, get a water pick, and use them. Use them properly. You wanna make sure that you brush for two minutes, twice a day, three times a day if you can, and water pick at least once or twice a day. Also, if you have a lot of plaque and bacteria, you probably should also be flossing at least once a day to mechanically wipe away any bacteria that's under the gums. What this means is, you know, getting under that pocket, you know, the collar around each tooth. It's easy to get the side of on the cheek or on the tongue side, but it's that pocket right in between the teeth because you realize that's a hard area. Now there's a wire, there's braces, and there's a little sulcus. Bacteria could really get stuck inside of there and it's really important to keep this area clean. Like I said, if your gums are irritated, they will bleed when you brush and floss and water pick but that's okay, that's to be expected. If it, this doesn't go away after a week of diligent brushing, flossing, and water picking, then let your dentist know. But if your gums are inflamed, you should expect them to be bleeding a little bit until you clean away all that bacteria that's under the gums. This process didn't begin overnight and it won't go away overnight, so be diligent about it. You know, Keep up with your oral hygiene routine and I can promise you within about a week's time, your gums are gonna look and feel a lot better. Speaking of keeping it clean, you should be definitely going and getting general dentist checkups every three to six months while you're in braces. This means that you should be getting professional cleanings so that they can get inside and use instruments to clean out those pockets and make sure that those areas are fresh. Also, the hygienist will monitor your gum levels and tell you, you know what, you have gingivitis or you're starting to develop periodontitis. So these are things that it's really good to go for checkups because they're specifically looking for these problems 
and will keep you up to date whether it's healthy. So if you have braces and you have not got a cleaning in the last three to six months, I encourage you after this video today, give your general dentist a call and schedule an appointment. And let me know in the comments, do you guys still go to your general dentist appointments? I have so many patients that think, well, I'm going to the dentist. They should be checking these things. Well, the orthodontist is specifically trained to be looking at, you know, your teeth, your alignment. Yes, we look at the gums and make sure that they're healthy, but we're not going through every appointment using a periodontal probe and measuring these, these pockets around each tooth to make sure that they're all healthy. So it's really important, like I said, to make sure that you go to your general dentist. And last but not least, sometimes your gums develop such an irritation throughout treatment that they actually stay this puffy after treatment is done. Now, if you brush and floss and go and get cleanings after treatment, yes, they may go back to a healthy level, but they still might be a little bit what's called fibrotic and they just might be thick. And this is something that won't go away without intervention. So when I see patients that have these thick fibrotic gums, it looks like your teeth are really, really short. So what I usually do for these patients is I recommend they see the gum specialist and the gum specialist can go through and you know cut away some of that gum tissue either using a scalpel or a laser and it makes your teeth appear longer, your gums to be healthier and a lot more favorable result. A lot of the time this isn't necessary because if you improve your hygiene, generally the gums will you know shrink back to a healthy level because they're not so inflamed and trying to keep blood in areas that are irritated. But like I said, in some cases, this isn't something that's reversible, but it's very dependent on your you know, particular case. So this is a conversation that you should be having with your general dentist, your orthodontist, and maybe even a periodontist who is specialized in these tissues. And that's pretty much all I have for today's episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys have found the information that we talked about helpful. And if you have any questions that I didn't address, please let me know in the comments of today's video. Like I said, keep your eyes peeled for a YouTube live. Like I said, I'm trying to do it this week. So be a little bit patient with me because I'm trying to, you know, I'm doing speed tests every now and then making sure that Wi-Fi is up to par so they don't have a disaster like we had the other time with the really, really laggy video. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button with the little bell so you can stay notified whenever I release a new video. I hope you guys all stay healthy, happy, and don't forget to keep smiling. I will catch you guys next week on another episode of Braces Explained or during this upcoming week on a YouTube Live. But for now, Dr. Greg, out.